So actually, we have our special guest here this morning, uh, John Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? <laughs> and he's going to talk to us about a column that he wrote recently uh, about Titanic grammar. So let me uh, share. We have a series, a regular series, that's called Everyday Grammar. And uh, it, it helps you to understand grammar uh, as it's used in everyday language, everyday English. So we look at things like song lyrics, uh, quotes from movies, and uh, you know, speeches by, by presidents and public figures, um, all, all kinds of uh, examples from everyday life of how English is really used. So the episode that we're going to talk about this morning for us is, <laughs> uh, is Titanic and English grammar. What can you learn from the movie Titanic? <laughs> so, well, the, John? <laughs> yeah, well, well, the good news is that uh, any kind of, uh, any kind of movie, book, song, speech, news article that you read in English can actually teach you important points about English grammar. So the idea for this story was to take an, an incredibly popular movie, Titanic. It's one of the best, uh, best selling, most popular movies in the history of film. Uh, and it's popular around the world. And so the idea for this story was to take just one small, small little scene and explore some of the grammar uh, underlying what the speakers say. Mm -hmm. So I'd like, to, I'd like to hear from our, our, our guests. Uh, are, are you all familiar from, uh, with the film Titanic? Have you heard of it before? Oh, uh, let's see, maybe just raise your hand or there is a way to raise your hand um, here. Let's see, okay, we've got a couple of chats. Uh, Ali, oh, Ali's <laughs> putting his number here. Practice, uh, I've done Zoom, okay. Let's see, I can see. Uh, let's see, no, Boo, are you raising your hand here? Uh, I can unmute you. No, no, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll continue. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so the idea of this was to take a, the, the popular film and just explore some of the uh, grammar underlying it. Uh, Dr. Jill, would you, would you like to continue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's your thing. So, and the scene that uh, John looked at in this article was at a dinner table, uh, one of the big fancy dinners on the Titanic. And the, um, um, let's see here, switch to here, here we go. So the, um, the quote is a wealthy woman who's asking Jack, the, the hero, the love interest of the story, uh, a difficult question. Let's see. Oh, we have uh, somebody who's texting us who says, I cannot hear anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think everyone else can hear, so check your sound settings. Uh, headset, check on the headset. Sometimes I accidentally click on the mute button on my headset, so. <laughs> So in, in, this, in this scene, uh, she finds out that Jack has no stable home. Uh, he's just traveling around. Uh, he was in Europe and he's uh, going to America. Uh, he won the ticket in, a, in a, a game, I think a card game. Is that right, John? I believe so. <laughs> and uh, he got a, the ticket to cross the Atlantic on the Titanic. So. Um, she says, and you find that sort of rootless existence appealing, do you? And what does Jack answer, Don? He says, 
Well, yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> okay, so this is this is what we're going to be looking at uh, in uh, in this example. And uh, what kind of a question uh, did the woman ask? Tan, would you like to explain about that? Sure. So th the first thing we wanted to talk about today is uh, tag questions. So tag questions are short questions that English speakers put at the end of a statement. So they, they will make this statement and then they will include a tag question at the end of it. And this is in general a way to uh, keep the conversation going. It's a way to ask a question. Uh, there are different kinds of, of tag questions, but for the purposes of ours today, the tag question is the words, do you? Mm -hmm. All right. So there's our example of, a, of the question. Now, here's your turn. Uh, can you make a tag question in English? Uh, this is a question that it might end in do you or don't you or aren't you, weren't you, okay. So I'll, I'll give another example, perhaps. Dr. Jill, I love studying grammar, don't you? No, I don't. <laughs> Can you all imagine doc, Dr. Jill, the expert, she doesn't love studying grammar. How can this be? Oh, another tag question. You must be joking, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> okay. We'd love to hear from our, from our listeners now. Yeah, um, so I think you can raise your hand um, on, oh, oh, there's Tom. Hi, Tom. <laughs> So yeah, and we have Mustafa. Uh, let, let's hear from Mustafa here. Hello. Hello. How are you? Great. Yes. It's great to contact with you. I'm very happy. Uh, so tell us your name and where you are. I'm uh, Mustafa Shalabi. I'm from uh, Egypt. Ah, another guest from Egypt. Yes. We were talking to Yasmin in Egypt earlier. So. Great. Can you make a tag question? Yes. Uh, are you happy? Aren't you? Okay. So, John, do you want to take that one? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, the, um, so th that was an excellent attempt. And so the only suggestion I would make is to, you can actually shorten the statement that you made. So instead of saying, are you happy, aren't you? You could just, you could cut out the verb are at the beginning and you could say, you are happy, aren't you? So yes. I could say, for example, so Mustafa, you're happy today, aren't you? So that, I would say that if I had some doubt, perhaps if you, if I asked you how you were doing and you said, oh, I'm, I'm happy, but I could see that you, there was a tear coming down your face. I could say, you're happy, aren't you? Because there's some doubt in my mind that maybe you're not happy. That's one example. Yes. Yeah. Um, for example, many of us now have to stay home from work. Uh, uh, before this, we were really happy to do telework. We didn't have to commute. But now, eh, telework is getting kind of boring. <laughs> right? Everyone is doing telework. <laughs> so... Mustafa, are you staying home these days? Yes, I'm staying at home, yeah. Uh -huh. So I could ask you, you're staying home these days, aren't you? Yes, I'm staying at home, yeah. Uh -huh. That's that's the tag question. All right, thank you. All thank right, you let's, let's go back to our group. Okay, I like this view where we can see everybody <laughs> on the screen. Uh, uh, John, do you see uh, anybody who's ready to? Uh, let's see here. Oh, Tom, Tom's got his hand up here. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you have a car, don't you? All right. Yeah. You have a car, don't you? Yeah. Hmm. No, I, I, no, I don't have a, I don't have a car, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a 
okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, John is a typical millennial. Uh, <laughs> He, he gets around on public transportation when he can, <laughs> or walking. Yeah, where, where do you live? Uh, so I live just outside of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Mm, okay, most Americans uh, have a car. Many of so us you, do. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you could you could phrase that into a tag question. You could say most Americans have cars, don't they? Ah, oh, yes. Yeah, yes. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so yes, many Americans have car do have cars. That yes, many Americans do, but not all of them. Not all of them. <laughs> oh, not all of them. Okay, not to everyone. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, so I've got another hand raised. Thank you, Tom. Oh, thank you. Sai Jen. <laughs> okay. And MC has raised their hand. Oh, we, we, we can see more people here. All right. I'm going to um, unmute MC. Hello. hello, everybody. Hi. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello. Yeah, fine. Fine. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I would like just to, to ask, uh, due to coronavirus, are you scared? Aren't you? Okay. All right, John. Yes. So, um, so I'll, I'll um, mention a little bit what I earlier uh, mentioned a little bit earlier with uh, Mustafa and his question. So when you, when you created the tag question, you can actually remove the, v, the verb be, so in this case, R, when you conjugate it, you can mm -hmm. remove that from the statement part of what you said. Mm -hmm. So you could say, you two are scared of coronavirus, aren't you? So you can mm -hmm. simplify the statement that you make before the tag question, and then you can include the aren't you at the end of it. Yes, but that was an excellent, an excellent uh, point that you raised, an excellent, an, an excellent question. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, did I type, did I put the question correctly down on the whiteboard, uh, Tom? Yes. You, can you see it on, on the whiteboard? Y yes. Yeah, so he said, you are scared of coronavirus, aren't you? Yeah, um, I think that Mustafa had R and U switched around, right? So the, the beginning of the tag question is always a statement. It's, it's not a question form. So we make a statement and then we add the question after, after the comma in the sentence or the pause you're speaking. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, our, that's our whiteboard there. If you have anything else you wanna add, let me know, <laughs> John. <laughs> and and um, MC, where, where are you located? I am in Germany. I am originally from Morocco, but I'm living in Germany. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. And let's see, Ali has his hand raised. We know we talked to Ali yesterday in Russia. Yeah, hello. Hello. Hi. Do you hear me? Perfectly. <laughs> yes. Uh, we are studying English with the best teachers in the world, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's a, an excellent, an excellent tag question. Yes, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> and it never hurts to butter up your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you familiar with that expression? To, to butter up the teacher? Butter, butter up, like like uh, the kind of butter that you put on bread. You you spread butter, it it makes your bread uh, tastier. Uh, <laughs> um, we say when you butter up someone, you flatter them, right? Or you give them a compliment. So when you flatter your teacher, then you get a better grade. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so thanks. <laughs> Oh, so right. I could, I, so I could, for example, make another tag question from what Dr. Jill 
just mentioned. So I could say, oh, he's buttering us up, isn't he? That would be how I would. <laughs> Great. Thanks. All right. Talk to you later, Ali. Yeah, thank okay. you. And let's go back, back to our panel here. Okay. All right. I think we have, uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, yes, Ming and Muhammad also has, let's see, let's go first to Muhammad because we, we, okay, I haven't heard from him. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm okay. Uh, where are, are you? you? I'm from Somalia. Great. All well, right. Welcome. Oh, yeah, we, you were on yesterday, but we couldn't hear you. <laughs> Yeah, yesterday I called you, but the my internet was so poor. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, do you so want to make a, a take? I want to ask. I I want to ask you more about uh, more questions about English. Mm -hmm. How do you see that? Huh? What question do you have? Uh. uh Dr. G, I wanted to ask you more questions about English. So how do you see that? How, how do I, how do I see? I'm not sure, I don't sure, I'm not sure about the question. Okay, uh, Dr. G, if I, if I start my question is, I'm from Somalia, we speak a small language. So I wanted to speak English uh, like a native or a native speaker. I wanted to be uh, to become someone who is a native speaker. Uh -huh. So, uh, is there any tips that you can advise me uh, uh, to improve, which can improve my uh, speaking ability? Yeah. Very good question. Okay. And um, I'm going to refer you to our website. Are you able to get our website? Your website, v, uh, VOA Learning English website? Yes. Uh -huh. um, recently. I, I, yes, uh, that, uh, that website I usually visit. I, mm -hmm. I also watch uh, uh, your YouTube uh, lessons. Uh, mm -hmm. I yeah. usually do all of that. Mm -hmm. So let me show you how to find uh, some answers to that kind of a question. Um, I'm going to change our spotlight here. Okay. Hello. Yeah, I'm. I'm just moving now to the website. And on our website, at the top of the screen, you can see it says beginning level, intermediate, yes, and advanced. Uh huh. At the beginning level page. Um, we have two courses. Um, these are video courses uh, that you can study on your own. The first is Let's Learn English Level 1, and then Let's Learn English Level 2 is a little higher. Um, level 1 has 52 lessons, so it's enough for one year if you do one a week. <laughs> um, level 2 has 30 lessons. Okay. But down. Oh, okay, uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I'm getting to the answer uh, for your can question. I, can I ask you another question? Wait, wait, let me answer this one first, okay? <laughs> I'm not done. Ask a teacher, okay? You see where it says ask a teacher? If you look at this can page. Can I ask you another? Yeah, uh, if you uh, look at this page. Uh, yeah. At this, on this page, I've answered the question that you have about how can I improve my speaking ability, uh, listening, uh, speaking, in, in general, in uh, English ability. So you can see that beginning at, uh, in January, uh, we had this, we started this series uh, with the answers to this kind of question exactly. Um, so here's, here's my story about how, how do I improve my English? So let me send this to you and then you can, I'll put okay. it in the, in the chat box for everyone. Okay, thanks Dr. Jill. Uh, I wanted to ask you another question. Okay. 
Okay, did uh, did you uh, did you hell uh, did you ho- held this uh, meeting uh, every day? Five days a week. This yes. This meet uh, life meeting. Yes. Yeah, you, you held it every day, yeah. Uh, Monday through Friday, our our work days here. Yes, and, and the topic for today is tag questions. So if you wanted to ask your question as a tag question, you could say, you hold this meeting every day, don't you? That is an example of a, of a tag question. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> okay, thanks, John. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, uh, I'm, new. I'm new from you. Uh, I'm new. Uh, so I wanted to, uh, to know more about uh, Prodesia. Excuse me. Today is a tech question. Right. Okay. Thank you. We'll we'll talk to you later. Thank you. Uh, we had someone else who raised their hand. And let me go to uh, Yasmin. Oh, I see oh, some. Oh, and Doc, Dr. Jill. Yes. Uh-huh. Just a quick. Uh, it's uh, you hold the uh, meeting, the ET. Oh. Okay. Let me. Go back to the whiteboard. Oh, well, it's one of those autocorrect things, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> or just <laughs> typing at 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was you hold this meeting every day, don't you? Okay, and let me go back now. Okay, uh, Yasmin in Egypt. Yes, I have another example. Okay. Okay, we are enjoying our time in home, aren't we? <laughs> okay, we are enjoying our time, we would say at home. At home, okay. Aren't we? Uh, what do you think, John? Yeah, that's a that's an excellent one. Yes. And so this is where this kind of brings to mind how uh, sometimes English speakers, they will use different tones of their voice to give different meanings when they get they use a tag question. So for example, in yes means question, you could say, Oh, we're enjoying our our time at um, we're enjoying our time at home, aren't we? But if what if she said, we're enjoying our time at home, aren't we? You kind of get the sense that there's a little bit of a different, maybe a a different, slightly different meaning there, depending on the tone of my voice. So yes, means question is excellent, perfect. But I just wanted to introduce to you the idea that sometimes you might have different pitches in the voice and that can change the meaning a little bit. Let's imagine that Yasmin's children are, are coming to her crying and saying, I miss my friends at school. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's terrible every time every minute <laughs> yeah and and so then you could say we're enjoying our time at home aren't we <laughs> as you you know start tearing out your hair <laughs> when can they go back to school <laughs> all right thank you yasmin <laughs> thank you okay uh do we have some other hands who are are raised here. Let's see, we have two pages now of uh, folks. Oh, uh, Galaxy 7, J7 Pro, where are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, hello. Um, yes, I'm Nakio from Vietnam. Okay. Welcome. Yes, and um, I'm a teacher of English right now, and I have oh, here uh, you are. an offer students my student about tech questions and then our I just want to ask some kind of our question related to this our uh, yeah tied of question like um shall we discuss more about this one uh let's discuss more about this one shall we yes um yeah so for example I have a question like this like uh, mm-hmm. go out tonight and what is the tag for this one? Like, will you or won't you? Is it okay to use a uh, boat? Yeah, that's okay. my question. So um, it, it depends on the verb. So 
if you say you will go out tonight, then the tag would be won't you. Oh. And but the question if, if you say you kind of... you you are going out tonight, then you would say aren't you. Hmm, so it depends it, on the verb. Kind of mm -hmm. Amen. Like mm -hmm. go out tonight. Go out tonight. Oh, so you're you're saying it like a a command form. Yeah, command exactly. Oh. Like go out tonight. Can I you will we uh get, will you and or or other tag in here? Oh, or should I, I, I use? Okay, let let's let's consult our grammar expert here. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, yeah exactly. so I, I think I understand what you're getting at. Um, Thank you. And it, yes. in the it, yes, the first one. So I I think what you're you're getting at is that you want to say like, you you will go out tonight, won't you? Um, mm. Is that what you're going at? Kind of a, a, a statement followed by the. In that case, it would refer back to to Dr. Jill's point mm -hmm. about it. It kind of depends on the 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 main verb of the statement that you're using, uh, yeah. but we we yeah, wouldn't exactly. in in general um, it, it, for like a, a an imperative command um, you would in general you wouldn't use a tag question after it. So for example, we we wouldn't generally say we would just say go out tonight. For example, like you want your uh, a student or or a friend or wh whoever you want them to go out. You know, go out tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, in that case, yeah. it's more of a it's more of an, a statement. And uh, in general, um, in general, we wouldn't add the tag question after that. Uh huh. But it's an oh. excellent it's an excellent question. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And tell us, tell us your name again. Yeah, my name is Nakio, and I is kind of our common kind of fruit in Vietnam. Oh, yeah, of pasta Nakio. apple in here. Yeah, in and, English, pasta apple. Have you tried level? before? No. Yeah. Um, what level do you teach? Um, I'm teaching students in high school. Mm -hmm. Are you teaching yes. online now? Yes, I'm teaching online also because of the coronavirus, you know, all the students uh -huh. are at home and learn with me, some kind of that. How's that working out? Um, I think it's quite good so far. Um, my student can learn a lot from, yeah, I also use Yum to uh, take my students so that they can understand quite well, I think. Thank you for your question. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, is, it, is it okay if I have one more question? Sure. Yeah, so I have another question like, um, I wish, I wish, um, Nam wish, Nam wishes uh, his mother had better health. Nam, mm -hmm. with, uh, or Peter wishes his mother had better health. So what is the tech? For this question, for this one, for this statement. Oh yeah. So go to the whiteboard so, again here. Yeah. Yeah. So in this case, we, the tag question we would use the verb. In the tag question, we would use the verb do. So Peter, Peter wishes his mom. Uh, Peter Pet. hopes it, or yeah, Peter wishes his mom uh, has better had health. better health, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we would use the we would use the verb do here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the auxiliary. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That's it. Yeah, yeah I so agree with, with you. Kind of, yeah. When when you have um, a are, when you have a modal in the sentence, like will, um, then you use that in the tag question. Uh, but when mm. it's just a regular verb, then you need the auxiliary for it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but my and I'm, just, I'm just saying that because you're an English teacher and I know you understand those terms. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so John, we have a lot of uh, comments in our chat, uh, some sample questions. Uh, would you like to address some of those? Oh, let's see. Uh, in the meantime, let me let, me, uh, let Nobu uh, ask his question here. Um, Oh. 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm Japanese. I'm Japanese. I'm from Japan. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm a little bit nervous because uh, uh, I'm big fan of the BOA learning English and I know the Jill and John, you are very good teachers. So I'm a little bit nervous. Sorry. That's <laughs> oh, fine. We won't bite. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, can, I, uh, can I tell uh, some example of the target question? Sure. Do yes. I? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, now, uh, for uh, new coronavirus uh, infection, uh, we don't like self-isolation so for coronavirus, uh, but self-isolation is a good chance to learn English well, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Yes, yes the, the, the novel coronavirus is a good chance to learn English. Yeah, yes. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed this uh, lesson, so I'm really happy to uh, meet you and uh, meet everybody. Thank you. It's good to meet you too. Good where to Where you. are you located in Japan? I'm living in Yokohama city near Tokyo. Now today, the Yokohama, and Tokyo, and Chiba, uh, Saitama, uh, around Tokyo, uh, will, uh, will, is going to uh, be locked down uh, this weekend. Mm -mm. Mm. And there won't be any Olympics for a year now, right? <laughs> yeah, so Olympic is pros postponed. Yeah. You know, um, it, there's these things are almost unimaginable. You know that. Mm. That you could that you could just okay we'll just do the Olympics next year. I'm sure much planning and discussion went into it with the international committee, but uh, yeah. So many many Japanese uh, imagine imagine that the uh, Olympic Games is not possible in this year. So and now uh, uh, we are uh, thinking think over the, about uh, different things. Uh, now we must focus on. Uh, the coronavirus infection now. The yes, next, everybody next, should so. stay healthy. Okay. That's what's important. Yes, that's right. All right. So, domo. <laughs> so, Arigato. <laughs> I lived in Japan for seven yeah. years. Yes. Uh, yesterday, I, I heard you. <laughs> so, in, so where where did you stay? Uh, you live in Japan. Uh, one year in Fukuoka oh, and six Fukuoka. years in the Kansai area. Oh, uh, uh, not Tokyo. No, I was oh. teaching at Doshisha and ah, oh, uh, uh, Kwansei oh. Gakuen. <laughs> oh, I used to live in uh, Fukuoka. Yeah. Oh, mm. Hakata, oh. right? <laughs> ah, sorry, I, I live in Ko uh, Kokura. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, mm. talk to you later. Yeah. Okay, Mata. You. See you. <laughs> Let's see. Um, John, did you want to talk about some of the comments? Sure. So we, yeah. we got a couple great examples uh, from the phone. It's just listed as Galaxy, but they wrote, we have never seen each other before, have we? Mm -hmm. And in that case, you might, um, you might use that in a situation, for example, such as this, perhaps maybe, maybe you're talking to someone online, you don't think you've seen them before, but maybe you have, you're, there's some doubt in your mind. So that's a a great uh, example. And then the, the next one was, uh, you watched Titanic, didn't you? So that one would be if you're, uh -huh. you know, having a, a conversation, perhaps you're talking about the film Titanic, a person says that they watched Titanic, but you mentioned something that came up in the film and they have no idea about it. So, uh, uh -huh. so for example, you know, if someone starts talking, if you mentioned the famous Celine Dion song, My Heart Will Go On, and the other person has, they're like, they, they say they've watched the movie, but they don't know about this song. You say, wait, you watched Titanic, didn't you? How did you not hear the, you know, the song? <laughs> <laughs> How about this uh, other question? Um, well, let's see, we had, uh, let's cook pizza for tonight, won't we? Oh, yeah. What about that one? So you, that one you could say, uh, we're going to cook pizza tonight, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the let's cook pizza is more, more like that command form, go out with me tonight, that um, our, our teacher friend uh, in, in Vietnam talked about. So um, I think that um, we need to just make sure the beginning part of this is a statement. Uh, we had a vocabulary question. What is the difference between lockdown and curfew? 
Oh yeah, that's a good uh, a good question. So uh, I believe a curfew. So for example, um, so for example, parents if they have teenagers, you know, teenagers they like to go out to see their friends. But a lot of parents they have a strict curfew, you know. So for example, my child, you know, you have to be home by eight o'clock at night or ten o'clock at night. For example, that is a curfew. The, the child can go outside into the, into the world, outside of the house, but the curfew means they need to be home by the time at curfew. So that's the, the time. Whereas a lockdown in general, I think, uh, so a lockdown is when transportation and other forms of business are not happening in the broader society. So there can be a nationwide curfew, for example, in an entire country, everyone has to be home by 7 p.m. at night, for mm -hmm. example. But a lockdown is much more strict. A lockdown doesn't refer to a specific time in the day. A lockdown is just for into the future. There's no yeah. time limit. So People, people must maybe stop uh, going out at all, right? Yeah. Uh, except for, except for um, emergencies or, or necessi necessary errands, like, like getting food or medicine. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the difference between lockdown and curfew. Uh, tell you what, I, can, I just realized I can drop this into the chat box. And if you want to copy it, you can. Oops, let's see here, uh, everyone. And for both of those words, we could we could we could use them in tag questions. So, for example, um, you know, I could say, "There's no curfew, is there?" Um, or, for example, lockdown. Uh, for example. Uh, Maybe perhaps uh, for, create a, a mythical example. This isn't actually true, but I could mm -hmm. say San Francisco doesn't have a lockdown, does it? Or something along those lines. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Exactly. This is a, you know, I said it was a mythical. It's not true, you know. I, in that case, if I said that San Francisco doesn't have a lockdown, I would be incorrect, right? Yes. <laughs> Right, San Francisco does have a lockdown, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's make that, uh, we can make that the opposite there. Now it's true. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, John. And shall we, shall we go on to our, our next uh, example from Titanic? So we talked first about, for the people who just joined us, we talked about tag questions. Here's our, our sample conversation from Titanic. Um, a woman asked Jack, and you find that sort of rootless existence appealing, do you? And John, what does Jack say? He says, after a pause, he says, well, yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, so let's look at the second part of that. Okay. Um, Polite terms. Okay. Yeah, so, so in this case, um, so the term ma'am is a polite form of address. And um, so I believe the history of the word, so it, it comes, you may have seen like madame, madame is kind of, it, it comes from French, but over time um, in, in English, uh, in many cases, the D sound has, disappeared or the D has disappeared and madam has become ma'am. And it's a polite form of address for when you are addressing uh, a woman you don't know or uh, you just want to be polite with, with another woman. So in general, this is an important thing. You don't use the term ma'am with the woman's name. So for example, if I, if I, uh, didn't know Dr. Jill, for example, I, I had never met her before, never seen her in my life, and I, you know, see her somewhere, uh, she comes up to ask me questions, I would say, you know, yes, yes, ma'am, 
to her. I would, I would not ask her name and then say, you know, something else. You don't say ma'am plus the woman's name, right? You just say, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but, but you should not say uh, to me, um, ma'am Jill. Right. Yeah, you, like, you, you wouldn't say that. Yes. Yeah, or Jill, ma'am. Yeah, they wouldn't say that. Um, and personally, I don't like being called ma'am. <laughs> it makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> it's more polite to say miss, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, I guess it, it, it depends. Uh, yeah, I guess Younger. it depends on the, on the people. Yeah, so yeah. many people would say, say uh, yes, miss, for a young, young woman. Okay. All right, so here's your question. Okay, uh, what is another way that Leonardo DiCaprio could have answered this question? All right, so, so John just gave you the, the one that's in the movie. Well, yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna look for hands now. Uh, we do have a hand. Oh, here's our friend in Nicaragua. Hello. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello. Doing good. Learning every day. We're, <laughs> we're seven and we're almost 45. That's good. <laughs> uh, I have a, so basically, I wanted to say or I wanted to be uh, about, I, want, I wanted to be sure about this war that with that our uh, expert uh, defined to us, which is Darfi and oh. lockdown. So basically the lockdown is for the entire day and the other one is just for the night. Is that what you yes. meant to, to explain? Yeah. Okay. So some cities, I think they're they're making it eight o'clock at night, a curfew. Ah, uh, curfew. Okay. Yeah. So why do they do that? Do you think? Uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't. Th I think it's because they want to reduce the job of the police, because you know often right. things happen at night, accidents or crimes, and the police are are already very busy trying to, to go and, and take care of people who may be sick, right? So, and to help the, you know, the firefighters and, and everyone, you know, who is rescuing people who need help. So uh, if, if there's a curfew, then no one is supposed to be on the street. So it's easier for the police to drive around and say, if somebody's on the street, then they are breaking the law and, you know, we get them off the street. Um, yeah. I, I, and so we had a question actually in in the uh, text. How can we use lockdown as a verb form? John, do you want to take that? So, uh, so a lockdown, a, a lockdown is it's a that is a noun, and so we actually when it, it becomes a little more compli complicated because it's a it's a. When we use it in verb form, um, it becomes more like a phrasal verb. So for yeah, example, you the government, separate you, you the separate parts, right? lock and down. So in other words, this is a bit confusing, but lockdown is, is a noun, it's one word. But when you use it as a verb form, it becomes two words. We have lock and then a space and then down. So the government locked down the city. The um, the police locked down the neighborhood or something along those lines. Yeah. So in California, we could say that the the governor, who is uh, Gavin Newsom, we could say uh, Gavin uh, Newsom locked down the state. California. So that's 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 an um, separation of the of the the verb, right? And the preposition, verb is lock, and preposition is down there. 
So this this becomes a little bit uh, more complicated because it in a in a noun form it's one word and then as a verb form it it separates. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, our friend in Nicaragua, tell us your 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 name hey. again. Julio. Julio. <laughs> uh, and Julio is is working a special schedule now. We, he said to us yesterday, right? Yes, that's correct. Actually, I need to go to work today, but I'm just taking my class right now. Okay. <laughs> <gonna> work. <laughs> oh. Studying English is important too, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Julio. Good, Julio. Luck to Good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, uh, somebody else said, please repeat your question. And let's go back to our question here. Okay. So the woman had asked Jack, and you find that sort of rootless existence appealing, do you? And Jack said, had, had answered, well, yes, ma'am, I do. What's another way DiCaprio could have answered this question? So if you have read the story, <laughs> uh, let me, uh, did I send out the, uh, uh, did I send the, the story out, John? Yeah. Uh, let's see I'll send I'll send everybody a link on the uh, on the chat here. And John, maybe you can look to see who's raising their hands. Oh, I see another chat. Okay, we have Mustafa who said great. Um, And so I see, so Mustafa had uh, still just one final clarification. Yeah, so mm -hmm. lockdown is no one is allowed to go out except in emergency cases. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then, and then a curfew is one where a specific time, it's people can go out, but they have to be in their homes by a specific time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the, that's the difference, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's yeah. go back here to... So did, did anyone have any ideas? So for example, if I'm playing the role of the woman and I said to you, and you find that sort of rootless existence appealing, do you? <laughs> how, how, what is another way you could respond to, um, to that? Okay, uh, Sun in uh, Vietnam has his hand raised. Hello, Sun. Oh, uh, am I on? Uh-huh. Hello. Hello. Hi. Am I on? Yep. Okay. Um uh, uh hello. Hello, 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 hello. <laughs> Um uh, we are talking about another way DiCaprio could have answered this question. And uh it could be easy to answer this question by yes or no, or like, uh, yes, I do, or no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so without the polite word, ma'am. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that, John? Yeah, so uh, so in terms of the, the grammar, yes, that, I mean, that, that would be acceptable, but in terms of, um, in terms of culture, so in, in general, uh, from a, a cultural point of view, people often prefer if you use a polite form of address when you're speaking, when you're speaking to them. So for example, so they, the meaning would be understood, but it might seem to the, the listener, the woman, that his answer is a little bit abrupt or a little bit strong. So for example, if I, if I said, you know, you know, Dr. Jill, you love to study English grammar, don't you? <laughs> and, Oh yeah, oh, and it's well, not really. Uh. <laughs> yeah, and, and then she's like, well, not really. Or if she responded to my question, no, like that's very the her meaning is clear, but it's very abrupt and strong. And to me, if I asked her, if I said, oh, Dr. Jill, you love to study English grammar, don't you? And she said, no, like that would the meaning to me. I would I would understand that she does not 
is not interested in talking about the subject further and that she might be a little bit maybe uh, in a bad mood. Like she might not want to have, she might not want me to talk to her right now. So <laughs> yeah. you could, yeah. So that's, that's the, one, the one thing I would add to, you, to your response is that yes, your, what you suggested are, you know, from a grammar perspective, correct. But just from a uh, cultural perspective, you might want to be a little careful about them. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. so it's, it's a, a way that you show that uh, you, you kind of uh, soften the mood between the conversation between two people. Uh, and here, Leonardo, uh, oh, sorry, I mean, Czech. Czech is from, uh, not, not as wealthy as the woman, so, Maybe he is the way he um, address her. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Yes, he's. You have to remember, and I will explain uh, as well. So I believe uh, Wynne asked a question uh, about, you know, the the woman's question: rootless existence appealing. Mm -hmm. So just to bring this back, so Leonardo DiCaprio is eating a dinner with the group of very wealthy people on the Titanic. And he is, um, rootless existence means you don't have a home. So Leonardo DiCaprio travels around the world. He doesn't have a home. He rides on boats and gets into various adventures, right? This is a rootless existence. And the literal meaning means from like a tree. A tree has roots in the ground, okay? Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't have roots, a home anywhere. So when this very wealthy woman asks him, oh, you find this kind of rootless existence appealing, uh, she's basically meaning, do you like being homeless, is basically what she means. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. so, he, and so he has to be very careful about how, how he responds because he wants to make a good impression to these other people, but he also wants to express how he feels. So that's why we land on this answer of, well, yes, ma'am, I do. And by the way, I have another question for you. Is this okay? Yes. Uh, here, uh, before we were talking about the tech questions and uh, in the woman's question is, is uh, you find that shot of Lutus is system appealing to you. Um, in the in the first half uh, is uh, positive, yeah. but in the, the 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 second part is also positive. Uh, is yes. it a, a way that uh, the the speaking works or something? Sharp, very sharp observation there. <laughs> yes, that is a that Thank is you. an excellent excellent question. Yes. So this is the this is one difficult part about tag questions. Okay, is that the statement part can be negative or it can be positive, and the response part, the tag question, can be either negative or it can be positive. And so, what what we can do is we have an article on our website where we explain all of the the different options. And so I can find that and send that to the group so that you can read it because there are small differences between all of these. And to be honest, we, we don't have the time to go into each one of them, but we will send you the article so that you can, uh, so that you can go through and look at it. And it explains very clearly uh, th these, these small differences. Yeah, I've uh -huh. sent the text uh, in the, uh, uh, the chat, the, the link to it in the chat. Oh, okay, great. Okay, we have one more question. We've got about okay, five minutes. You. And um, I'm going to, yep. Yeah, thanks a lot, San. San. Talk to you later. And we have somebody else with their hand up. Uh, and here's, here's, our, here's our question. Let's see here. What polite terms in English do you use for men? We talked about ma'am earlier. Right. Leonardo DiCaprio said, well, yes, ma'am, I do. So how about the uh, uses for uh, of, of polite terms for men? And Tariq wanted to talk. Let's 
see if we can find it. Mm -hmm. There you are. Hi, everyone. Hi, Tariq. Hi, Ms. Dr. Jeff. How are you? All right. So let me get you in the uh, main video. There we are. Yes, so where I, are you? Uh, I am from Pakistan. Great. And and uh, and your name? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Yes. Uh, uh, mechanical engineer. Great. I have. I have completed a diploma in digital fabrication from Faber Academy. Great. Mr. Under the supervision of Mr. Neil Gerasenfield, MIT director. Oh. So you're a mechanical engineer. Yes. Yeah. Now Great. I am uh, teaching at uh, in Pakistan University. Uh huh. Uh, How are things uh, in Pakistan these days? Uh, sorry. Uh, how how is the is the situation in Pakistan? The same situation uh, in the, as they are in United States. There is a curfew, a lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, so you uh, can't go to the uh, university. No, I can't mm -hmm. because of curfew. All this it is risk for all uh, staffs and students. So we are in, at home for mm -hmm. safety. Uh, almost five to six days, almost passed away. Mm -hmm. We are at Yeah, at you've been home. home about a week now. Yeah, we're on our second week here of, of uh, essentially uh, staying at home all the time. <laughs> So, uh, would you like to try uh, answering our question about polite terms in English for men? Uh, basically, I have no idea, but I think so. He is so polite as, uh, as I think so. Uh, John, why don't you ask a question and see if he can answer you politely? <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, so I could be, uh, ask a basic question. So, uh, how are you doing today? Today. Mm -hmm. I watch uh, the stress mo uh, movie or the drama to improve my uh, English and some of uh, the research papers which I am uh, I am doing a master's in energy system. Oh, so you're I studying. Passed, uh, this day. Yes, and, and so earlier we, we, we talked about polite form of address for, uh, for a woman you don't know. So for example, in the film Titanic, Leonardo DiCaprio call, says to a woman he doesn't know, he says, yes, ma'am. Uh, so he, that is a polite form of address. And can you, can you yes. think of the, yes. the equivalent if I was, uh, if you were addressing a man you didn't know, but you wanted to be polite, do you know the word that uh, that English speakers use often? Uh, yes, boss, or yes, sir, I think. Oh, boss. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, I would say in general, so, so, so boss, um, it's, it's good you bring that up. So a boss as a noun um, is, is fine. So I, you know, I talk about my boss or, you know, Dr. Jill's boss. But when you address someone as a term of address, like when you're speaking. So if I, so if I called you, for example, boss, that would be more like we were on uh, friendly or a very casual terms. Yeah. So this would be almost like it is a, a, a friendly way of addressing someone, but it's very casual. So for example, yeah. you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to, um, if you saw, for example, a very prominent businessman or politician, you wouldn't say, hey, boss, what are you doing today? Like, uh, <laughs> it would be it would be a little too, yeah. too casual, you, you see. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, but no, it's uh, that's excellent, excellent idea though. Yeah. So we have some comments in our chat box. Um, we have Sir, Mister, a uh, gentleman, or gentle, not gentle, but gentleman, um, patron or patron. <laughs> uh, yes, Sir, Mister. What do you think about those, John? Yeah, so I think the the closest equivalent to ma'am, if you were talking about a male, would be sir. So for example, if I don't know, so for example, Tarek, if you know, if I if I saw you in the street and I was asking, I wanted to ask you for directions, for example, um, I would say, excuse me, sir, can can you please yeah. tell me how to find, you know, the the train station, for example, or if you saw saw me uh, in the street and you said, "Excuse me, sir, can you tell me how to find the, the restaurant?" You know, this restaurant, for example. So I think "sir" would probably be the closest, uh, or the best way to to politely address uh, mm -hmm. a man that you did not know. And this is good for you know, someone who's maybe even your age and you just want to be very polite, or if it's someone even older than you, much older, you know, in their 60s, 70s, you know, it's a, it's a polite uh, term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so, thank you. so you should say, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank so, you, three. <laughs> this, this is, uh, this is, if we're a casual situation, you could say, thanks, boss, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is very, ca that's very casual, you know, you would say that with your friends, so. Right. But uh, we're, we're, we're friendly here. We're a friendly right. environment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your question. Yeah, thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. So I think we're just about out of time for today. Uh, let's go back to our view. Oh, we have all kinds of people here. Uh, you can see uh, we had a comment there. Uh, uh, I don't understand what thing, what time is the class? Okay, in the USA. Ah, so here's someone who lives in Brazil and they want to know. Uh, so it's in the USA, it's eight o'clock Eastern time, the Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and uh, thanks for everybody who joined us today. We will be back here tomorrow, the same time, uh, with uh, uh, another another guest uh, host, uh, Ashley Thompson, who you know from English in a Minute. So, <laughs> thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, John, for your expertise. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Dr. Jill. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>